we know what this is, don't we? Yeah, it's Laffy, Gotta Laugh, who is with the Political Carnival and is a regular feature on our show. And poor, poor Laffy, we've really put you through it. We had told uh, Laffy that this was going to be our last night on Green 960, and with Future Uncertain, we get back to her when she's going to be on the air. What are you doing next Friday at 645, Laffy? I'll be here. Okay, I, good. I swear to God. <laughs> don't change it on me again. I'll get lost. <laughs> no, we won't. For our listeners just tuning in, we are going to be on KRXA out of Monterey next week, and they'll be streaming, and we'll be just the same with the live blog going LFTLC dot com slash live uh, laffy as opposed to our usual feature with you that we had talked earlier this week about something you were going to bring to the show and that was your impression of how much teenagers are grasping of what's important news and what's not and that goes right into our topic tonight because if liberal media can be sustainable and it can thrive the political carnival your website if that can thrive and keep going then there's a chance there's better education out there so let's start from point one on that let's talk about that original story you were bringing me it's how little they grasp. It's not how much they grasp. Um, a lot of the teenagers have absolutely no idea what's going on in this world, except for John and Kate plus eight, or um, the Tiger Woods story, or the the party crashers at the White House. That's it. That's mm-hmm. it. Um, I, I hinted around. I, I gave them. You know, I, I was I was trying to test them on their knowledge and. One of them didn't even realize that there was any news about the president other than he was the president. Mm. That was it. I said, "What do you give me a major news story about Obama?" He said, "He's president." And I said, "Well, that's good. That's, <sighs> that's fine, honey." But that's no. called a fact. That's not called yeah, a story. <laughs> they actually get their news from either overhearing uh, what their parents are talking about, or walking from the bedroom to the kitchen and watching CNN as they, you know, sort of walk by and get a whiff of news. They inhale deeply. They get more than a whiff of news. So um, I try to encourage them by making it more of a storyline and making it kind of a soap opera event. And, you know, look what happened to them today. Look at look Afghanistan. Oh, look, look at that. There's a whole new storyline in Afghanistan today. So, you know, that's the only way I can reach them in short little sound bites. But, you know, at least you're making the effort to reach them. Is your impression that they don't put the effort into finding news or that the venues that they look at are pushing John and Kate Plus 8 as news? Or is it a combination so, uh, of all I, that? I have a big bone to pick with our so-called news media, and um, and that is that they don't push much more than tabloid stories. And when there is a big story, they touch on it, and then they jump into the back and forth arguing about it rather than the substance of the story. So the kids are just hearing either a sound bite or an explosion that they see on TV, whether it's you know figurative or, or literal, or they're hearing tabloid news, which is pushed all day long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's odd that we've gone from just the 5 o'clock news at night and the 10 o'clock news at night to a 24-7 news cycle on multiple channels, and they're still all running the same stuff. It's still, if it bleeds, it leads. That's exactly right. You'd think with 24 hours to fill, they would actually fill it rather than, you know, it's, it's, the assen- it's essentially reruns all day long. It's like watching summer reruns, but it's supposed to be news, and the news DJs just keep on pumping that out at us. Meanwhile, the kids, I don't expect them to, you know, be all into the news and into serious stuff. They, they enjoy lighter fare, but, but they should have some idea of what's happening in the world. I mean, I hated news as a kid, but my parents kept me up on it a little bit, and I, I did see the news for more than five seconds at a time, so I was aware of elections. And I was aware of big issues. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's talk about Political Carnival. And this is the website that you and Patty have, have, and you also have other bloggers there. This is where we read the Gotta Laugh stories that we usually talk about every week. And the one element we haven't talked about, sustainable liberal media, is uh, Political Carnival takes ads. And ads yeah. can really be problematic in liberal media because we'll often have to turn around and skew the very people who are giving us money to get the message out that's a real hardship. It's, it is. Um, we have a revolving Google ad that uh, it, you see Ann Coulter come up and you see Sarah Palin come up, and I get complaints about this all the time, and we have no control over that. Uh, without that, we wouldn't make any income except for the every four months or every three months donation drive that we have, which we hate doing. You know, having your handout is not an easy thing. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and then we had an ad up for PETA. We still have it up. It was uh, Pamela Anderson, and it was it, it kind of risque, and people really got turned off. So we managed to, to um, work with the people who really appreciated the business we were giving them, the PETA people, and they cut the picture up so that it, from the neck up rather than seeing what I call boobage, you know. So yeah. um, it, it, it was a little bit 
not what we'd want to represent every single day when when you have people really good readers come up and that's the first thing they see and th- and this is an ongoing discussion for you guys because you do want to keep the political carnival going mm-hmm. you don't want to go broke doing it and right. yet you know this is a re- it's a real trade off it is a trade off and but i consider this that the people who are coming to our site generally are uh, more liberal or more, more progressive, and they won't bother with those ads. Why would they click on those ads? So mm-hmm. really, we're, we're making the money, and all we have to do is have the ad up, but nobody has to click on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Nobody's understood. going to buy that product. You know what I think, Laffy, I can tell you from my own experience, it, since you have trouble putting your hand out for donations, I recommend you go work 15 years for the local public television and radio affiliate. Boy, <laughs> it's just second nature. You wake oh, up in the morning and say, can you give me a little money? <laughs> Stand out on the corner of Yucca and Las Palmas wearing fishnets. I could, I could really well. <laughs> My gosh, the visual is stunning. Now we're going to go into video instead of audio. <laughs> yeah. Well, Laffy, I'm glad to have your thoughts on that, and uh, we've just put the link up for the Political Carnival. Susan O'Leary, our producer, has just linked that on our live blog. And next week on Friday, 645 via KRXA in Monterey, it's you and me again, and we're going to talk about the best and the worst of the week. Can't wait to have you back. Uh, same here. I'm really excited about the move. All right. That's got to laugh who blogs as Laffy at the Political Carnival. She has great scoops throughout the week, too. So you want to be following her on Twitter at Gotta Laugh, just like it sounds with two Fs. Gotta Laugh.